Some plants are easier to propagate than others. We can create more potato plants by taking a seed potato, cutting it into smaller pieces, as long as we have an eye or two per piece, and then just planting those pieces in the ground. Easy to get more plants from the potatoes. Now the coleus plant is also easy to propagate. We just take a stem cutting like this, remove some lower leaves, put it in a glass of water, and it'll root in no time. Again, very easy to propagate. But for the average homeowner who doesn't have the luxury of a greenhouse, propagating some of our favorite woody landscape plants can be a little bit more challenging. Perhaps you have a lilac shrub that your great-grandmother planted and you want a new start of that, or maybe you want to propagate another plant in your landscape that uh, has been in your family for years and years. Well, one method you might think of trying in this propagation technique would be to layer the plants. Right now is a good time to try propagation by layering here in the early spring, although it can be done later in the year. Propagation by layering is a technique that's been used for centuries, and it entails the process of getting roots to form on a portion of a plant while it's still attached to the mother plant. The strawberries and blackberries and raspberries layer themselves naturally whenever their stems come in contact with the ground. Well, right here we have a Prague viburnum. This is a semi-evergreen shrub. It'll have clusters of white flowers out on the ends of the branches here in a few weeks. And I'm going to attempt to layer this plant. Right here is a, a branch down near ground level that I can easily bend down to the ground. And right here it's got a portion of the stem that's fairly young. About a one year old aged branch is a, a good uh, place to try doing a layer because the roots will form easier on those younger branches. But uh, see I can easily bend it to the ground here. So I'm just going to kind of mark in the soil where I want to uh, dig a little pit. I'll start doing that here with my hand trowel. and I'll just kind of scoop out a little bit of soil. Maybe scoot over from that root I just found. But the little little trench only needs to be about, about three or four inches deep. I'm going to rake this soil over here. And then all we have to do is bring the branch down where it's going to be below, below ground level. I'm go ahead and cut that little root out of the way. But there I can, I can pin that branch where it'll, it will be below the soil surface. And right here I've got this little homemade wooden pin to hold the branch in place. Now you could set a brick over the top of this or make some sort of staple out of some really thick wire. I'm just going to try to work this down into the soil here, being careful not to scratch my, my branch. I'm going to move it right quick. Work that down into the ground a little more. There we go. Now I can slide that underneath there. And all we have to do is bury, bury the branch in the soil here. Tamp it in a little bit. And I'll water it in. And one of the neat things about layering is that the branch still has the leaves, or if you, if you didn't have a semi-evergreen uh, shrub, you would still want several buds out here that will produce leaves, but those leaves will photosynthesize, uh, send that energy down into this area below ground here. Those roots can start to form, and we still have the advantage of this umbilical cord, or so to speak, uh, this branch connecting to the mother plant. Now this should produce enough roots that by this fall we can come out, clip that loose, and uh, have a nice plant. One other option we could have done would have been to take in a nursery pot like this one and just buried it in the ground here and then pinned the branch right inside the container. That way we could just come out, snip that branch, then just lift the container 
and would be fine that way. This way we'll just have to dig this up, put it into a pot, or just take it immediately and plant it somewhere else in the garden. But this type of layering is known as tip layering, and it works very well for plants that we can take a branch and bend down to the ground. Now for those other plants or larger shrubs or trees where we can't bend a branch to the ground, we'll have to try a different type of layering. In the past on our program, we've shown you a method of propagation for large house plants like the rubber tree plant and the weeping fig called air layering. Well, believe it or not, you can try the same method on some of your outdoor plants. We're going to attempt it on the southern magnolia. If you look at these leaves, it almost looks like a large rubber tree plant. Well, the process of air layering is really similar to the tip layering like we did back with the viburnum, only instead of taking these limbs and bending them down to the ground, we're going to bring a little bit of the ground up to the limb. We're going to take some sphagnum moss, wrap it around this limb, seal it up to uh, seclude the light, and see if we can get this plant to root. Well, the first thing we need to do is select a branch of uh, a portion of the tree that's only about one year old, and that's because it will root a little better uh, than some of the older branches. And to help get it to root a little better, we're going to make a wound here on the branch, about an inch section here. And what I'm going to do is cut away the outer layer of the branch. We'll just kind of kind of shave that away. We'll remove all of that little green layer. Well, now you can see we've got the outer layer uh, trimmed away, we've scraped away that entire green layer or that cambium layer. And the main thing we're wanting to do with this wound is to interrupt the flow of sugars and carbohydrates that are produced by the leaves going down to the rest of the plant. Now the vascular system of woody plants is similar to the way an ink pen is put together. If we think about a pen, we've got this this inner cylinder full of ink, and then we've got this outer cylinder that uh, the inner center cylinder just fits into. And we can think of this ink filled portion as the xylem where the roots take up the moisture and nutrients from the ground. It travels up on the very inside, the very inner portion of the branch going this way all the way up to the leaves out here on the end of the branch. Now the leaves do the photosynthesis, they produce those sugars and carbohydrates. Those travel back down this way in the outer portion or the outer portion, the outer parameter of the branch. So we've got that two-way uh, system of the vascular system of, of the tree. This is the xylem with nutrients and water going this way, the sugars in the phloem or that little green layer coming back down this way. So what we've done by taking that little inch out of there, we've created a gap and all of the photosynthates that are on their way back down the stem are going to collect right in this portion of the branch. And that's going to help us initiate those roots, get those roots started. Well, to further assist in the formation of roots, we're going to add just a little bit of rooting powder. This is a number eight rooting hormone. It's just a, a synthetic plant hormone, but we're going to dust some of that on our on our wound here. Don't want to get it too thick, but we'll we'll kind of rub it around and get it completely coated on that on that wound and up in this this area where we want those roots to develop. And to give it a good media for those roots to develop into, we're going to take this sphagnum moss we've had soaking here all morning, squeeze out the majority of the moisture. And then we're just going to pack this around that wound. So this is our little bit of little bit of ground that we're bringing up to the branch. It's 
So to keep that moisture sealed in place, we're going to take a piece of plastic here, wrap it around our little ball of sphagnum moss. And we'll get that, get that on there pretty tight. And the, the ends of this need to be need to be sealed up, so I'm just going to take some uh, electrical tape and uh, just tape this to the branch. Get that plastic sealed to the branch. Try to pull that tight, keep that moisture inside there. Now the electrical tape will have a little bit of elasticity, that way if the branch starts to swell up it won't constrict it in any way it'll move right along with it I'll get some tape down on this end as well again the tighter you can get that plastic get it sealed up keep that moisture inside there the better luck you'll have So there we go. There we go. We've got the sphagnum moss all sealed inside our plastic here. One other thing we're going to do is to help block out the light and keep the heat from building up in here. We're going to take a piece of aluminum foil and just wrap this around that little pouch. Just kind of mold it to the branch. And we could also Take a little bit of tape if we wanted to secure that as well. And there we've got it. We've got a little patch of earth up here on the branch. Now with most plants, they should produce enough roots by this fall to where we could come out and clip that off, but not so for the magnolia. The magnolias, the hollies, the azaleas, and the lilacs need to leave this on until about the next fall. They need about two growing seasons to develop enough roots inside that little pouch. So we're gonna we're gonna leave this on until a year from this fall for the magnolia. If any flower buds develop out here on the tip of this branch we'll clip those away as well because we don't want any energy going to the flowers or to make seeds. We want that energy going into this pouch to produce produce those roots. You might come out and check this later in the year, make sure no, no squirrels or rats or any other critters have gotten inside there and chewed into that plastic, letting it dry out. If that happens, just take everything off and uh, redo it. And uh, we'll see if we can get us a southern magnolia to root. So if you want to try to propagate some of your woody plants, if you can bend a limb to the ground, you can try the tip layering method. But if you can't bend the limb to the ground, you can bring a little bit of the ground up to the limb and try to do an air layering. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.